Okay, so in this video, I'm going to go over several ways to add in these crossovers. And what makes this difficult is because these crossovers are on an angle. Now, it's easy to set up crossovers when they're horizontal or vertical, but when they're on an angle like this, it's a little bit more difficult. And it seems like every time I start a video and I start showing how to do things, I start thinking about other ways I might be able to do it. And that's why I'm making this video. Now, if you haven't seen video 14C, it's probably best to go and look at that one first, because in that one we put in these two tracks, and I explain why I have these two rulers up here. So for this first method, I'm going to cheat, and I'm going to use a drawing I call my bits and pieces drawing. I've also referred to this as the pre-built entities drawing. So let's go get that drawing. And here are my entities that I have built up. And let's take a look at the whole thing. And it looks something like that. And I keep adding to it as I find things that I want to keep. So let's zoom in here, and we're going to grab our number six right crossovers on two inch track spacing. Now in another video, I'm going to explain to you how to build up some of these. I'm also going to do some complaining about the way any rail does some things, and I'll show you some workarounds for some of the things that really annoy me. But for right now, let's grab this guy. We'll highlight the whole thing. I'm going to copy him. We'll go back to our drawing here, and we're going to paste him in. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to rotate him to the same angle as our tracks here. So we're going to go get the endpoint. We have to deselect the entity that we just put in. And then we can grab our endpoint, and we see it's 281.4 degrees. So we'll grab that, copy it, and we'll come up here and we'll paste that in. Okay, so now we're at the same angle. So let's drag him down, and we're going to pull these two pieces of track back. I'm going to find out where it looks good. Probably somewhere right in there. Now we need to connect our pieces of track here. Unfortunately, if I just come over here and drag it over, it's going to curve this piece of track. So we don't want that. I can't set the same X, Y points because I want this to align to this. But what I can do is I can say, well, this looks pretty good. This is about where I want this. I can come in here, zoom in, put my mouse right there, right click, and it says add line. And I'll put a line in. Let's go out just a tiny bit. Now I've got a marker. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to pull it back. Now I'm going to take this end and I'm going to drag it up to my marker. Let's zoom in a little bit. And that puts me on just about where I want to be. I might be off by a 64th of an inch or something like that, but it's pretty close. Come back out, grab this guy. And now he's about where we wanted him. He's pretty darn close. So let's grab this end, drag it up, let it connect, take a look at it. This one has a radius of 11,490, and this one has no radius in it at all. So I think we're looking pretty good here. And if I want to confirm that, I can come up, grab my ruler, spin it around. and take a look. We can go to center line. We can lose the image. And sure enough, it looks like we're on two inch centers. So that's a nice, easy way to put my crossovers in. And I know they're aligned. Now I just come up here and I can delete that line I put in. And we're looking pretty good. Now I have a switch up here that I want to put in. 
So let's grab that and let's bring that around and connect them. And I'm pretty close to where I want to be. Now I'll show you on this one. Now, if you didn't like where it was, say I wanted to move this down a little bit, what I could do is I could disconnect, disconnect, move this out of the way a little bit, come over here, grab this guy, back him up just a tiny bit. We'll pull this one back even farther, reconnect it. See, I'm getting closer and I can just keep doing that, disconnecting, moving, backing up the track a little bit until I get it exactly where I want it to be. Okay, so that's a way to do that if you have a pre-built entity set up. So let's look at another way. We'll reset our drawing here. Now for this method, we're going to build up the crossover manually. We're just going to take two switches and try and put them into place. So let's go get our number six left hands. We're going to need two of these. Let's bring them down here so we can zoom in a little bit more. Now we want to set the angle on both of these. So we'll go grab the angle, 281.84. We'll set this one. And then we'll set this one. Now we'll kind of roughly place these guys and try and get them on the lines here. That looks fairly okay there. Now let's pull this guy back. Do the same here. This is one of the annoying things about any rail is that I cannot edit an entity like a switch. So I can't cut this back and make these two points connect up. So I'm hoping this is right. I don't have these switches yet. They, everything has been back ordered at the time of recording this video. So I'm hoping that when I get the actual components, I'm going to be able to uh, do what I'm doing here. If I can't do what I'm doing here, I'll just uh, come back to the drawing and uh, we'll change it. So now we drag this guy out. We drag this guy out. And we see we're way off on this switch here. So this guy has to move quite a bit. He's got to move up like that. And that looks fairly okay there. Now I can come in here and I can see the center of my track and I can see the center of my switch. This is my switch. This is the center of my track. I can come up here and do the same thing. And you'll notice that I'm off up here. So now I can come grab this guy, try and move him back a little bit. Be nice if I could turn on the center line and leave it on, like maybe have it be a different color, make it just like white, or be able to set the color that I want. So let's uh, click on that. And that looks pretty good. And that looks pretty good there. So now let's see uh, what kind of damage we've done here. Let's, let's pull this guy back. Just do it freehand. 13,369 inch radius. Well, that's not too bad. Let's pull this guy back. 15,254 inch radius. So I think we pretty much ended up with parallel track with our switches in the right location. Now I have that other switch for up here. Let's go grab it. And let's pop that one in. See where we are. It's nicely lined up. And once again, if this was off up here, I could come in and I could disconnect these guys and move them around. Now, another thing I can do if I wanted to, if I wanted to make these straight, again, come in here, delete, delete, grab them, 
move them out of the way, tell it to be a straight piece of track. Let's move this guy just a bit. Then come up here, grab those guys, bring it down, connect it. Still looks pretty good up here. Come over here, connect, hover over it. 5,283. So the track was actually a little straighter the other way, doing it the other way. But uh, either way, it's fine. I mean, like I've mentioned before, you know, at 5,283 inch radius, it's pretty much a straight piece of track. So the last method, which you might want to skip, is pretty much what we did here, only we work with center line. So let's just go over that. Like I said, if you want to skip that one, you can. So let's reset this drawing. Okay, so let's try this with center lines, and you can skip this part if you want, because it's pretty much like what we did in the second part. So I have my switches pre-positioned here. So what we'll do is we will grab these guys, and we're going to drag them out. It actually looks pretty good, doesn't it? I'm going to drag that one out. Then we're going to come up here, we're going to turn off our main image, because we already know that these are pretty much where we want them to be. Make that go away. We're going to go to center line, and we'll zoom in so we can see what we're doing. I found that helps. So we're just going to drag this guy up until he looks like he's... until his center lines look like they're on. Now let's go look at this guy. Just going to move him. He's actually the one we're going to build off of. So we want to try and get him centered pretty good. We can come up, we can come down. We can also go left and right. But we're going to leave him right there because that looks pretty good. Then we'll come down here and We'll try and get this one on the line. And again, that looks pretty good where it is right now. We'll go up. And you're going to watch. You're going to watch one of the ends like that. So I'm going to watch this end over here. Come down. And say I got it. It's starting to show underneath the other track. Two. That looks good right there. Come down here. That looks good. Come out. Let's look at right here. Let's select him. That looks like he's lined up fairly well. Now I can go left or right and see what happens to this point right here. This is the end point of our switch that we want to move. This is this is the diverging track of the switch that we want to align to. And you can see I got a little bit of green here. I don't have any green there. Let's see what happens if we move him. Getting more green. Now I've got the same amount of green on both sides. Let's come down here and let's look at our endpoints. That looks fairly good. Let's move them up. Two, down, one, two. Move them down again. One, two, three. I think that's probably good. So now we will zoom back out. We'll grab our endpoint. Take a look at it. 6,232 inch radius. Let's grab this guy. That one is actually a straight piece of track. So now we can turn our image back on. Go back to track. Let's go grab that number six we want to put up here. Pop him into place. And he's in the proper location. So there you go. Three ways of putting in crossover on an angle. Each one has its pros and cons, and uh, each method comes out pretty much the same. So once again, I hope this video helped, and we'll see you in the next one.